Welcome back to Get Google Ready for 2025. And as you know, this is the playlist where I take you through not only how to correctly set up all of the campaigns that you'll need to be using for Google Ads in the coming year, but I also take you through how to correctly optimize all of these campaigns. But before you can optimize any campaigns, we need to make sure that you've got your campaigns set up correctly. And today I'm gonna be taking you through how to correctly set up your search campaigns inside of Google Ads. Now, as we go through this process, I do highly recommend that you've already gone through and completed your keyword research and you've also got your ad copy ready to go. And inside of this playlist, I do have other teachings on showing you the step-by-step -step process of how to complete your keyword research and also how you can put together the best ads for your Google Ads campaigns. And as we go through this video, I will be going through the step-by-step -step process, but if you do miss any of these steps, I don't want you to worry because if you follow the link in the description below, you can get access to my Google Ads search campaign setup guide, which has screenshots and also instructions of how to complete all of these extra steps. So if you wanna get access to that setup guide, just make sure you follow the link in the description below. All right, with all of that said, let's jump into a screen share so I can take you through the step-by-step -step process of how to set up your Google Ads search campaigns for best results in 2025. Now, the one thing that I would recommend is that before you set up your search campaign, you've already got your keyword research and your ad copy ready to go. You can see from here, I've got my keyword research broken out into different campaigns and ad groups, and I've also got my ad copy ready to go. So when you're inside of Google Ads, you wanna to go to new campaign. Then you can either choose sales or leads because this is gonna be for a lead generation example, we're gonna choose leads. You can also do sales, it's gonna give you the same steps. Now this is a training account, so that's why you're seeing this warning of that this conversion action is inactive. There's a couple of things here. If you've got multiple conversion actions and you don't want one of them to be there, you can remove them. And it doesn't remove it from the account, it just removes it from this campaign. Doesn't mean that this campaign won't generate those conversions that have been removed. It just means that if you were to add in any smart bidding strategies down the track, it wouldn't use those conversion actions as part of their bidding process. If you don't have conversion actions set up yet, you don't need to worry because you can add these later down the track. And as well, if you are doing some special types of campaigns like call only or something like that, it will actually give you the option to set that up inside of the campaign. But at the moment, let's just do a general search campaign, go through to continue and we want to select search. Leave this alone because we've got a conversion action up there. If you don't, as I said, you can add this later down the track. Go through and click continue and then add in your name. Now, when it comes to your name, one of the main ways that you can see success with Google ads is by breaking out and adding in new campaigns. So if you see any keyword themes, which are getting a low spend, but they're getting really good conversion rates, you can break them into different campaigns. So I'm really big on adding in campaign names which speak to what that campaign is about. The reason why that is also really beneficial is when you go to optimize your campaign, rather than just seeing like lead search five or search campaign four, you know exactly what it's about. So the example campaign we're doing is gonna be about our one bedroom villas. So what I would be writing it in here is search. Now, if you're an e-commerce brand and you're, you know, you're selling men's shorts, you might call it men's search. And if it's like for a US campaign, so it might be men's search USA. And then you might have men's search New Zealand or men's search Europe. By adding in a really strong campaign name, what I call naming conventions, it just makes it easier down the track when you've got more than one campaign running. Once you set that, add in continue. It's important to note though, that this is only for internal use. So no one else will see it. It's just whoever has access to the account can see the name. Go through and click continue. And then it starts bringing you through this process. So as you can see down here on the left, you've got the different steps we're gonna go through. So ideally, I would start on clicks. Later down the track, we're gonna talk more about bidding. So I don't really wanna go into my reasons for that. Generally, we will start on clicks. But as I said, we'll talk through this later down the track. Same with the, the bidding options. But for this general one, we're just going clicks and then we go through and click next. With your language, with campaigns, I generally recommend that you only have one campaign per language. The reason for that is because Google Ads will not translate your ads. Now you can see in through here, after a little while, some extra options have popped up. So I unselect Google Display Network. And the reason for that is because for a search campaign, remember the display network display is image-based ads. And if you're gonna have image-based ads, I don't want text ads going up against it. I would set up a separate campaign for that. Google Search Partners Network, unless you're operating in the US, I haven't seen any real big benefit in there. But as I said, you're not gonna, it's not gonna hurt your campaign if you've got it accepted in there. For locations, the only thing I'd say with locations is you can also select enter in your locations via a country, city, region, or even postal or zip code, depending where you are. The other thing to remember is your location options presence or interest or presence only. 
So I've got some explanation in here as well when we're at this section. This you can see in this one in through here with the locations. So this is the people who are regularly in your locations or people have shown interest. So depending on what you're targeting, I will generally just have this as presence only. Now, audience segments, this is something I do recommend. The main thing I need to remind you of is that generally we will just use the observation method. Sometimes we'll only use targeting, but that's sometimes down a more advanced strategy. But for the moment, we would just use observation and then I generally like to start with about 20 or 30 different audiences. Now, the reason for why this will become important is because when we go to optimize our campaign, especially before we've got in and used some smart bidding strategies like maximize conversions or maximize conversion value, what we can do is we can add in what's called bid adjustments. So if we see some audiences that are performing well, we can increase the spending on them. If we see some audiences which are performing poorly, we can exclude them, but we want to be able to see that data. So people will kind of think, oh, it needs to be 100% related to it. Remember that you're just asking for the data. So Google does not narrow the reach of your campaign, okay? It's just, as I said, you have the option for bids on selected segments. So add in 20 or 30 because you wanna be able to get as much data as possible. Now, for the broad match keywords, I keep this off. Generally, what I do in here is, as you would have gone through the keywords research, I do a collection of broad match and exact match keywords. In the more settings, there's nothing really in here you wanna add unless you wanna add in some brand exclusion. So let's just say you want this search campaign to not include any branded search, you can add what's called a brand list where you add in, so let's just say brand is called My Villas in Bali. And what you generally do in here is you would add the URL. Now, because there's no brand in there yet, because it's not a big brand, you can request that. It generally takes about three weeks for that to get approved, but that's the way that you can add that brand setting in there. If you do want to run an ad schedule, so let's just say this is for a service-based company and you only want ads to run between Mondays and Fridays, you can make all these adjustments in there. Once you've done that, just go through and click next. Now I skip this section. The reason being is because we don't need help with the keyword and asset generation because we've already done these two elements. So click skip. Now, when it comes to the ad group, don't forget to change this ad group as well, especially if you're running multiple ad groups, similar to what we said about the being able to see the reporting. When you've got multiple campaigns and multiple ad groups, you're gonna be really, really happy that you took the 10 extra seconds to add in extra ad group names. And it's all about things that make sense to you. So what we do through here is that we've already got our keywords. So that's our campaign. That's our ad group. We add all these in. Now, the way that I've got this segmented is that these top three are gonna be our broad match. And then these other ones in through here are gonna be our exact match. So what you can do is if you wanna, you can add it an exact match here. The other option is too, is you don't have to do it like I'm doing it now, is that what you could do is when you've actually selected the campaign, you could go back into the keyword match types and change them over to exact match. Then you just create your ads. Once again, I pull up my Google sheet, which has got all my ad copy in there. And I'll just go through, add in my display path. This is one and then I added my headlines. So and as you see, I've already got them all in here ready to go. As you can see here, this is what makes it a lot easier to complete your campaigns when you've already got your ad campaign ready to go. I could add more. I would recommend adding somewhere at least 10, but just for the purpose of this example, I'm just gonna add the minimum that, that is required. Same with the descriptions. We'll just add in two. You can add in up to four, which I'd recommend. Once again, we're just gonna do the minimum so we can get this ad approved. And then also as well, add in your site links. So you don't need to add these in, but this is where you can add them in. And I would highly recommend it. It's a matter of adding in the site link text, the description, and then the final URL. Remembering these act like little extra menu bars, which will appear underneath your ads. The main reason why I really like them, especially on a mobile, is because once you've added in extra ones, it does increase the size of your ad and it also makes it stand out a little bit further. So I add in my site links, I'd also add in the call outs. And this is where you can add in all of your different ad assets right inside of the campaign setup. When you're happy with that, you go through to next, then you need to add in your budget. Now, Google is gonna give you some ridiculous amounts. What we wanna be looking at, and this is why we're looking at our keyword research, we can see in here, we know that our average cost, the most expensive one is gonna be $3. We wanna be getting at least 10 clicks a day. So I'm happy with a budget of $30 a day. You don't need to have $300. And then you can go through and click next. And then what you need to go through, you can see from here, we've gone through and you just need to go through and just double check that you're happy with everything. And when you're happy with everything, you can then just go through and click publish. And then you've finished the setup of your new campaign. 
And that's the process that you need to use in order to set up your Google search campaigns correctly. Now, remember, if you missed any of those steps, all you need to do is to follow the link in the description below and you can get access to my free Google Ads search campaign setup guide. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. I really do appreciate your support. Make sure that you don't only subscribe, but you also turn on that notification bell so you never miss when I release new videos in my Get Google Ready for 2025 playlist. And if you do want to watch all of the available videos in that playlist that we've got live already, go through and watch this playlist right here. See you next time.